What's going on, family? Today, the video is about porn and its relationship to trauma and low self-esteem. Porn and its relationship to trauma and low self-esteem. Now, truly, some of you guys and, and girls have had the opportunity to look at the videos, and if you have not already done so, I encourage you to click the link below to subscribe to my channel. On my channel, I have a bevy of videos dealing with porn addiction. Yeah, they're pretty long, and but they're long because I really pride myself on trying to give you practical tips and strategies to help you overcome porn addiction. I myself, if you don't know, I was, I'm a licensed minister. My name is Dominique Brown. I'm a licensed minister that struggled with porn addiction for over 17 years. And there were certain tips and strategies that I implemented in my life that finally helped me defeat <coughs> pornography addiction. So, you know, that's why I'm so passionate about this, man. I'm so passionate about it. I'm passionate about it because of what it cost me. I'm, I lost a lot, you know, um, and and I don't want anybody else to go through the same thing. And uh, but there were reasons why I got into porn addiction, and and it goes back to the title of what we're talking about today, and that's porn and its relationship to trauma and low self esteem. Now, <clears throat> to understand how I got involved in in porn addiction and how many of you guys got into porn addiction, you have to understand what trauma is. You have to understand that trauma is this 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 sudden thing that happens outside of the norm that's not supposed to happen, but that trauma causes pain. It causes a rift. It causes a rift in your life. It causes a splinter or a fracture there, <clears throat> and because of that, you we we as individuals, we as people, we tend to uh, supplement that or, or by by allowing ourselves to bring other things into the equation in order to help us with that trauma. For example, my wife and I were, were about to watch this movie today, and I can't think of the name of the movie but off the top of my head, but I've seen it before. We were about to watch it again. It was with Sharon Lill and I think I want to say Brian J. White was maybe in the movie, a couple other people in the movie, but essentially... It's a movie about this psychologist who um, ended up being this nymphomaniac. And we find out later that the reason that she became this nymphomaniac and she was a married woman, right, was because as a child, she was gang raped. And I, I remember telling my wife, I said, that makes sense that she became a nymphomaniac because the way that she dealt with her trauma was by becoming a nymphomaniac, you know, sleeping with different men and stuff like that. Because in essence, it was her way of, of of taking back control over her narrative because she was violated. So I can imagine it was almost like, you know what? I'm, I've already had this special part of me taken away from me anyway. So... If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it on my own terms because it's no longer special to me. So she engaged in this in this behavior that was not normal, which was that nymphomania, which uh, basically essentially cost her her marriage. And you know what? Even though that's a movie that happens to many people in real life, <clears throat> they engage in, in behavior that's subversive because they have had a trauma and, a, and, and and sometimes we have a culture that we don't deal with uh, a trauma correctly. We don't teach people how to deal with trauma correctly. But sometimes people don't have a safe space that they can go to to discuss certain things. So instead of us talking about those things, we'll deal with them in, in, the, in, in the bad way, in a way that's not only... Uh, disadvantageous to us, but it hurts other people as well. And I said on a previous video, I've said it before, that's why you have situations with these insults, these guys that are involuntarily celibate, who 
instead of them dealing with their trauma, the way that they a lot of those guys deal with it is by becoming mass murderers, going out there shooting up the place because they have a chip on their shoulder because of something somebody did and they end up hating women and stuff because if you look at a lot of those mass murderers, they are insults. Not saying every insult is like this, so please don't write me and say, well, Dominique said all insults are mass murderers. No, but by and large, many of them are insults. Now, drama, what happened? What happened to you? And I, this is a question that I want want you to fundamentally ask yourself. And I know you clicked on this either because you thought that the title was catchy or more than likely it's because you want to quit porn addiction, right? You, you, you're you in a in a situation where you're like, yo, man, I'm so sick of this. I'm so tired of this, right? And I understand. And I want you to ask yourself a quick question. What has happened in your life that has caused you to be comfortable at one point, maybe not now you're not comfortable because that's why you're watching this video, but at one point that caused you to be com comfortable with porn addiction. What were you thinking when you watched that porn video? But some, some of you guys, you'll, you'll say, well, you know, I was just thinking about getting my rocks off. Some of you young ladies were saying, you know what, I felt lonely and I saw the guy of my dreams, whatever. Whatever your why is or your thing is that you're into, ask yourself that question. Ask yourself what traumatic situations has happened in your life that you have a lot of hurt and you have a lot of pain. And I can almost guarantee you that those things have contributed to you becoming a porn addict. So as I'm speaking, I want you really to think about that for a second. But for many of you, <clears throat> you come from fatherless back home grounds. You come from homes where maybe the father was there, but he was sort of absent. You came from a home that's you, you witness abuse, you witness your mother uh, being abusive to your father and your father being abusive to your mother. Many of you guys and un girls, unfortunately, were molested. Some of you were raped. Some of you were in situations where, you know, you got into a porn later on because... <clears throat> You love the person and they cheated on you. And so now you you got into full porn because you you want to feel like you're in control because now you can control what that person what you're attracted to because that person is looking you dead in your eye and saying nasty stuff and so you're envisioning yourself doing this whole time because your man never looked at you like that. Your woman never looked at you like that. But this porn, even though it's not real, you'll convince yourself unconsciously that it's real. They are looking at you like that. They are looking at you in a way that you wish your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend looked at you. Your husband, your wife looked at you. And because of that, the rabbit hole got deeper. You watched it. You kept watching. You kept watching it because you never addressed the real issue. And that issue was rejection. And ultimately, you became a porn addict. You became a bad addict. So as you can see, folks, as you hear my pop-ups coming up, trauma is the reason for many of our addictions. Whether it be pornography, whether it's sex addiction, whether it's drug addiction. But as my expertise goes, because I dealt with it for over 17 years, and I was able to overcome it, we're dealing with pornography addiction. So, using me as an example, what was my trauma that ultimately led me to pornography addiction and ultimately 
because of the porn addiction, or actually the the low self esteem. And that's what I was going to talk about trauma and low self esteem. But the low self esteem and the and 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 the trauma were mixed. They were basically intertwined together. I'm getting ready to explain that. So for me, I didn't know my father. Didn't know my father whatsoever. I wouldn't have known my father if he passed by me on the streets. And I did not finally get to meet my father until the year 2012. And I said meet in quotes because I remember living in Miami around 2003 or so. And the whole purpose of me going to Miami is because I was trying to find my father. Wasn't successful. Went to went went to graduate school for a semester. That didn't work out back at that school. Flew out to LA. Decided to go back to graduate school to another school. And for about three, four years, I struggled. Struggled more. Till about twenty fourteen or so. I said, you know what, I'm going to try again to find my father. This time, um, I tried to find my father, and I looked on the Internet, and it was something. And, and I, I know it was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, this is your father. I was on Facebook, and I clicked on his picture, <clears throat> and that picture connected with me. And I emailed the guy, and I said, hey, look, I'm Donnie. I'm your son. You know, I just want to know if blah, blah, blah. Actually, let me back up. My mother, may she rest in peace. I took the picture to my mom and I said, Mom, is this my dad? She said, yes, that's your father. And that's when I tried to reach out to connect to him, only to find out that he had basically just recently passed away. So for years, folks, I had issues with porn addiction. I never knew my father. And I gave you an example of how, how I actually found out who he finally was. <clears throat> um, I was raised by my grandparents. Grandpa who died when I was 10. Grandmother who, although she meant well, she, she could be very verbally abusive. I was also raised in church. I was raised in a church with, you know, but you learn not to do certain stuff or basically you're going to go to hell, you know, that type of thing. But I never did really have a relationship with Christ like that. I, you know, I knew the Bible. I knew all this stuff backwards and forwards, but wasn't really living a life. And I was teased. I was teased relentlessly. I was bullied. I was told I was ugly. Um, you know, I was called an F word, if you guys know what I mean, what they, what they call homosexuals. Not because I was gay, because I wasn't, never been with a man, never been attracted to a man. But because, um, you know, I was awkward because, you know, I had ugly clothes and off-brand tennis shoes. And I was intelligent, you know, I wasn't from the streets and uh, I wasn't popular. So, you know, you were F word, you know, you can't get no girls. Ha, ha, ha. And so I tried to do everything in my power to be accepted because I got tired of being talked about. I got tired of being belittled. You know, I got tired of the girls turning me down but what I didn't understand the reason that a lot of the girls was turning me down because I lacked confidence I lacked a lot of confidence I had very low self-esteem very little low self-worth and so when I was in eighth grade I was on a basketball team and the boys were huddling around 
talking about sex. I didn't know anything about sex two years prior. On a basketball court, a guy asked me, was I a virgin? I was so out of it. I said, no, I'm not a virgin. I'm from Arkansas. I am not from Virginia. Wow, I was lame. I was corny. To me, a virgin was a person that was from the state of Virginia. Yes, I was that person. And I also thought sex was just grabbing a girl on the butt. Now, I'm going somewhere with this story, folks, so please bear with me. I promise you we're going to get to, to a solution, but I want to go somewhere with this. So I thought sex was touching a girl on the butt. So when eighth grade come and they asked me about sex, no, I'm not I'm not a virgin because I touched a girl on the butt two years ago. And they're like, ha, 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 Dom, Dominique, you're dumb, you're dumb, Dominique. <laughs> and then they asked me, well, I tell you what, since you said you had sex, I, we know you're joking about that. Uh, how does it feel to ejaculate inside of a woman? I said, well, yeah, man, the only thing you do is get on top of a woman and you pee inside of her. And they teased me relentlessly, like, ah, you don't know anything about sperm or whatever they said, hi, whatever. And it sold my fate as just this nerdy, socially awkward dude that would never, ever, ever get women in this small country town in South Arkansas. Because they already had me built, perceived as that guy. So I was always going to be in that box. So what did I do? Well, I decided, well, you know what? I need to learn about women. So what I did was I went and rented a porn video. I went to my local store and they used to have the porn videos way in the back. And I said to myself, and I waited till all the people got out of the store because keep in mind, I was raised in church. I was the church boy. I, read the Bible, did all this kind of stuff in church. So I went in the back and snuck back there to look at the, because I used to so look at the, the things, and I felt like, oh my God, I'm about to go to hell for watching this porn. But I got to see it because I'm tired of being teased and bullied, and maybe if I learn some stuff, maybe the teasing will stop. Maybe the trauma will stop. And I rented a video and I took it home. And I think I was probably about 14, 15 at the time. I don't know, 14, 15 at the time. And I waited till my grandmother went away and put the videotape in, looked a little bit, and then I took it out. You know, I had reactions. And you guys know what I'm talking about, about reactions. And uh, got my fix, took it out. And that was my first time actually watching a porn video. And for years prior, every time I would go to school and a girl would turn me down, I would just go watch a video or start getting the books, start getting the, the various magazine periodicals that was out at that time. And I said to myself, I don't need a woman here because I got this girl that's in this magazine. And the way that she's looking at me makes me feel validated. It makes me feel good. And you know what? I don't have to have sex anyway because guess what? I'm not getting a girl pregnant. And I can just pleasure myself and think and, 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 and think of a woman while I'm doing this to myself. So I know I said a lot there. But I wanted to be transparent with you guys. That's how I got involved in pornography addiction. It came about because as a child, I was told I was weird. I was told I was ugly. I was told I was I was never going to mount to anything. I was told I was stupid. Uh, my name was Dominique. And so people say, oh, you dumb, Dominique. You dumb, Dominique. You dumb. You know, stuff like that. And I internalized those external messages. And then the only thing that I was good at 
at that time was church, faith, God, knowing God, having a relationship with God. And then when I got to church and the little girls turned me down to church, the people at church weren't really that close with me like that. Then that really further solidified it because it's like, dude, I'm getting turned down at school and I'm getting turned down at church and I got to go home and I got to hear. Uh, basically, baby was made to feel like nothing I did was ever good enough. Nothing I ever did was worth it. Nothing I ever did was secure. So the one thing that made me feel good about myself was popping in that porno tape. Because it was at that time, it was at that time, I felt in control. It was at that time that woman would look at me through that screen and I felt like she was looking at me. And not only was she looking at me, she was attracted to me. She thought I was special. She thought I was significant. She didn't, she didn't, she didn't judge me about my hair. She didn't judge me about the way I sounded, or you don't have the best clothes, or you don't have the best jewelry. She didn't judge me because you don't have a car. She didn't judge me because, you know what, you don't have all this swag or whatever. She didn't judge me. And because of that trauma and because of my low self-esteem, that ultimately caused me to gravitate to watching pornography and to, to continue, I should say, watching pornography. It caused me, even though I knew it was wrong and I felt dirty, I would come home, look at these magazines and the rabbit hole was getting deeper and I would masturbate. But I couldn't give it up because Mentally, mentally, psychologically, pornography had become my crutch. It became the salve that I use to deal with my pain. It became the ointment, if you will, that I put on my psychological, mental, and emotional wounds. Pornography. And sure, people told me different things. They said, well, Donnie, the only thing that you got to do is pray about it. But only thing I knew was I could say, well, God helped me to do this. But I was at an age where being rejected meant a lot. You know, when you 16, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old, you think, you know, the world is about to come to an end because a girl don't want to talk to you. Right? Here I was with low self-esteem. And if I would have had higher self-esteem at 15, 16, 17 years old, then that stuff wouldn't have even mattered anyway. Right? they just been like, okay, whatever, I'll talk to somebody else. So what's my point that I'm trying to make, make to you guys? I wanted you guys and girls to see yourself through my lens and let you know that if I can overcome porn addiction, you can too. Trauma was its way in for me. Trauma, pain, no self-esteem. And the more that my self-esteem was built up, let me show you one of the ways, the keys that you you make you make 
you, you, you grow your self-esteem. You grow it by making a decision and sticking to it. That's how you grow confidence. Confidence is inextricably linked to high self-esteem. So if you want to build an area of life, be realistic. I'm in the process now of losing weight. I don't go out there and say, well, I'm going to run five miles today. Because if I go out there and I'm not able to run five miles, then that's going to take, I'm going to take a psychological hit from that because I didn't do what I said. So what I do is I give myself manageable goals. And every time that you set a manageable or realistic goal, as you call them, and you complete that, each time it's an extra notch on your belt and you become more confident. Many of you, ladies and gentlemen, have tried your best to overcome porn addiction. But the reason that you have not overcome porn addiction is because you've given yourself too lofty goals too soon. Wow. You, you, you watch pornography every day for the last 20 years. Every week. And here you are now saying, well, you know what? I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna watch it for six months. And that's good that you think that. But what I'm saying is you want to go through the process the right way. You want to get to your point. You want to get to a point to where it's not about what you're not doing and you want to get to a point that is organic for you because as long as you're focusing on not doing something you're still thinking about doing it so what you do is you start focusing for me you start focusing on building your relationship with Christ you start focusing on fasting. You start focusing on praying. You start focusing on other things outside of that. You start focusing on forgiving. Because for me, I had to forgive. My, my trauma was made stronger because of my unforgiveness. Because I didn't forgive my grandmother. I didn't forgive the people in the community, in that particular community that bullied me. Those little girls that called me ugly. I didn't forgive. So every little step in my process was, I'm going to show them one day that I'm not ugly. I'm going to show them one day uh, they should have accepted. I'm going to show them. But guess what I'm doing when I'm, when I'm thinking, when I have that train of thought? You guessed it. I'm still putting them on a pedestal. I'm still putting them in a position where they matter. And they don't. So what I'm trying to say to you is some of you, you, you ladies and gentlemen, are struggling with different things in your life. And in this instance, porn addiction is because you are too busy, folk, number one, because of unforgiveness. And then number two, you're, you're, you're trying to show people what they missed out on or you're trying to get back at people trying to be show revenge and what i'm telling you it's not worth it it's not worth it you're struggling because you're breaking the law of forgiveness and the law of forgiveness is simply this the law of forgiveness says that if if, if god in christ forgave you you should forgive other people in other words, you should let it go. It doesn't matter. So let me harken back to the first question that I asked you all in the very beginning of this webinar, webinar, this video. The very first question I asked you, I said, where did your trauma come from? And I hope by now, that you're able to ask what trauma you have. Because, for example, say that you've been molested. Say you've been raped. 
molest. I, many of you guys are into porn addiction because you have been molested as children. And that's a, a thing that nobody wants to talk about as a man because you feel embarrassed, you feel dirty. You know, some of you guys are questioning your, questioning your sexuality because you have this grave harm caused to you. And so you want to admit, like, man, when I was a child, I was molested. And it's not your fault. Same thing for some of you ladies. It's not your fault. So just take those things, for example. Say molestation. So now the reason that I watch porn, unconscious, and these things are unconscious many times. The reason I watch porn is because I feel in control when I watch it. I had this violation happen to me as a child. But when I watch this pornography, I'm able to connect to it in a way that is controllable to me. I have control over the interaction because it's faced molestation and rape. Those are crimes of, 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 they call them passion crimes. It's not about the feeling, it's about control. Like, look at me, I have the ability to be able to dominate over this other individual. So it's, a, it's a crime of aggression. Or as they say, passion. When you're watching pornography, guess what? I'm in control. I can cut that thing off whenever I get ready. I can watch the type of porn pornography that I want to watch whenever I get ready. I'm in control. If, if I'm looking at that camera, if I'm looking at this porn and this girl says something I don't like, guess what? I can cut it off. And I can dismiss her when I get ready. That's the reason a lot of people are addicted to pornography that have been in those type of situations. So I gave you guys that example of somebody that's been molested and been that's been raped. What about somebody who <clears throat> just has a stream of low self-esteem? Well, as you know. Low self-esteem comes from a spirit of rejection. You've been rejected in some kind of way. Maybe your mom rejected you, your dad rejected you. Maybe you you it's a spiritual thing where you were rejected in the womb. Maybe, maybe as you were being carried in your mother's womb, and this is a very esoteric thing that I'm about to say here. You are staying in your mother's womb, lit in your mother's womb. Your mom said these words. She said, man, I wish I had a boy. And you, and here you are, you're a woman. Or she said, man, I wish I had a girl. And here you are, a man. Or she could have said, man, I, man, I, don't wish, I, I wish I wasn't pregnant. I wish I would have had an abortion. So spiritually, what happens is... She's put that intention out in the atmosphere. And the Bible says your words are spirit and they engender life. Our words are spirit. And so you come out of the womb already feeling unaccepted, already feeling unloved. Or maybe you came from a family of 10 people, 10 siblings, and you were the sibling that got less attention. Everybody teased you. Everybody bullied you. So what I'm trying to get you to see, folks, with all these different examples, whatever your trauma may be, is that there is freedom, folks. There is freedom. Porn addiction can cause low self-esteem because of trauma. I'm a living witness. I already had low self-esteem, but it caused me to go farther down the rabbit hole. And here's a bonus tip that I share with that. Ultimately, because of my porn addiction, it ultimately become, it caused me to become depressed. It caused depression. Because I didn't I didn't know 
the way out. Felt trapped. Only thing that I knew was that this virtual, this virtual world that I was engaged in via, via pornography felt good. But then when I would go into the real world and I was uh, continuously rejected, it made me want to really continue to cling to that fantasy. But that made me depressed because the only thing I wanted to do was to be accepted. The only thing that I wanted to do was to be loved. That's why you have people like Elliot Rogers, for example. Look him up, folks. Elliot Rogers, it's, uh, the guy who committed the mass killing in, at the University of at Santa Barbara some years back, who was an insult. Keep him from, you know, would, would help get him accepted, help them get women. He was extremely jealous. What I would have told somebody like Elliot Rogers is, man, get your confidence up, man. Get your confidence up. Step your game up. And I get no, no, and, 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 and ultimately people like that end up having, a lot of times have violent tendencies, they end up objectifying women, objectifying men, and they don't even know that in, that objectification comes from years of watching pornography. And that's why they're so unrelatable to other people, which further causes them to become depressed, which further causes them to be unrelatable to other people. And it all stems from trauma that was not properly addressed, trauma that they did not talk about, trauma that they're trying to keep on the inside. So I encourage you ladies and you men to, to seek help. Seek help. Reach out. My Dominique at PornAddictsHelp.com Dominique at PornAddictsHelp.com Get a professional psychiatrist, a Christian counselor. I'm so big on Christian counselors. Why? Because you have to understand the spiritual implications behind why you do what you do. Folks, this Bible that I believe and I trust so much says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. There's meaning behind that. There's an esoteric reason why you're doing what you're doing. I know it for a fact because I've been there, folks. I'm not telling you this stuff because of theory, because of what I what I heard. Uh, uh, um, what you got? Uh, I should know this because I got a master's degree. Jesus Christ! You know, you, you know how you had that moment. Um, you're not here with the, the role. Jesus Christ. I can't even think of a name. Uh, think of this guy's name. Uh, uh, Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud. I'm not telling you some kind of Freudian theory, right? I'm telling you from my own expiration, experiential knowledge. I'm telling you based on what I've been able to accomplish in my life how I was able to overcome. And I'm telling you that many of you have problems overcoming porn because you have trauma that you have never addressed whatsoever. You have trauma. And here's the other thing. You try to glaze over your trauma by, by, by creating these false narratives of yourself, by creating these false personalities that are not real. Because you rather be act like that trauma didn't happen than to address the trauma. And then you go behind closed doors and you're still struggling with pornography. And, and then you'll go on all these little videos. You'll get covenant eyes. You'll do all those different things. And I'm not against covenant eyes. So please don't think I am. But what I'm saying is, what's the point of having covenant eyes? If you don't get to the root of it, 
Because at the end of the day, it's in your heart. Folks, you want to be free from the trauma. I tell you this. The Bible says that, I'm just paraphrasing. It says that no man can go into the house until he buys the strong man. In other words, pornography it's not the strong man. The strong man is whatever causes the, 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 the trauma in your life. See, folks, I'll be honest with you. All roots of addiction are based in trauma. Some kind of trauma is something, something there on the inside of you, whether it's a spirit of rejection, whether it's a spirit of pride, whether it's uh, low self-esteem, shame, low self-worth, whatever the case might be, that it ultimately Focus your attention into that trauma. For me right now, I'm going to share this with you as a bonus. For me right now, I overcame pornography. Now I'm trying to overcome gluttony. Yeah, I'll be real with you because I love to eat. My mother passed away recently. And when she passed away, man, I the way that I dealt with it is wrong. And God forgive me for doing it. But I try to act like it didn't happen. And I ate and I looked up and I gained like 20, 30 pounds. I went, oh no, I can't do this because I can't do this, right? But I'm honest about it. I was able to confess it and now I'm putting myself in a position to work on that thing. But I'm honest about it. And so that's what I want you guys and you girls to do. I want you to really seriously and, and you go to the right people. You don't talk to People who are going to put your business out there, who are going to tease you. And I know a lot of you guys have been molested. And that's, uh, uh, that's a dirty secret that's going on in many of in, 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 in the United States. People don't want to talk about this male molestation. And, you, and, and you, you attach your own sexuality to that and think, well, if I tell... So and so that I was molested as a child, you no know, people may look at me funny, and that's sick if they did look at you funny because of an injury that should not have happened that's happened to you. So my point to you guys is this, and you girls is this, is I want you to really sit back and look and 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 and, and write down things that have really hurt you in your life. And I really want you guys to start making decisions, manageable decisions. And, and here's the thing, folks. Focus on the trauma. That's the key. One of the keys to really overcoming pornography addiction is focusing on the trauma. Foc focusing on getting rid of the trauma. Because if you can get rid of the trauma, you can get rid of the behavior easy. The behavior is nothing. It's just the trauma that happened that caused the behavior to occur in the first place, if that makes sense. So in other words, me, for example, using me for an example, I realized that I had low self-esteem. I realized that my low self-esteem was happening because I had words spoken over me as a child that were very hurtful. And I expressed those words to you early in the video. I was told I was ugly. I was told I was, and you know, I would never amount to anything. I told I was the F word and all this kind of stuff because I couldn't get girls. You know, I was told that I was awkward. I was crazy. I was, you know, weird and all this kind of kooky and all this kind of stuff. And I internalized those words. Not only that. <clears throat> But I was told I, 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 would, I didn't know whether I was going or coming. So then that made me not make decisions. You know, I would make a decision and not do it and quit. Go over here, make a decision and then quit. And always going back and forth. Uh, the Bible called it being double minded. Why? Because that was ingrained in me as a child to almost be wishy washy back and forth. And so because of that, I could never get anything done. I could never get things accomplished. And I grew up starting stuff and not finishing it, starting stuff and not finishing it. And so ultimately that caused me to 
really question myself and caused me to have a lot of low self-esteem. And then I, that low self-esteem, because I couldn't accomplish it, caused me to become depressed. And because I was depressed, it caused me to have low self-confidence. You see how the, ra the rabbit hole gets deeper and deeper, low self-confidence. And because I had low self-confidence, when I wanted to get a girl, I couldn't get them. And I kept getting rejected. And so I could have, and so ultimately, it caused me to want to watch the porn because the porn made me feel accepted and it made me feel validated. But then me watching the porn, I feel dirty and icky because I, I went to church and I knew it was wrong, but I felt accepted. So what's my point? My point is I dealt with the issue. So I dealt with the issue of saying, you know what, Lord, I am not those things that those people said that I was. I'm not the things that my grandmother said that I was. I am loved. I am accepted. Before, see, this is where the word of God comes in at, folks. The Bible says that before he formed, he knew me in my mother's womb. The Bible says before uh, the foundations of this world itself, God knew me. So that means that that even though my father was not around, God knew me. Regardless how of, of the vessel that I was allowed to come through and allowed to be put into this earth suit, because we are humans having a we are spirits having a human experience. Regardless of that, the Bible says He knows every grain of hair hair on my head. The Bible says that. Before I was in my mother's womb, he knew me. So if he knew me, he already knew the situations that I was going to go through. Right? He knew me. He also said this. He said that when we are in Christ, we are new creations. He said that all things are passed away. All things are become new. All. What's all? Totals. All. A-L-L. -L, every single thing. So I say that to say this, the more that I started to understand who I was in Christ, my identity and stop trying to place my identity in my past and start going to the future and knowing myself in Christ. And, and I totally destroy the, the, the stuff from the past, the more it allowed me to get over porn addiction. Because the porn addiction was related to me not knowing who I was in the first place. The porn addiction was related to me being rejected. The porn addiction was ultimately related to me getting to a point to where I had this lustful spirit and I end up having all these perverse you know, appetites and stuff. And the God ultimately delivered me from that. So that's what I wanted to tell you guys, folks. That's why it's so important for you to get in the word of God. I know some of you guys watching this don't believe in Christ. You don't believe in God. You like, okay, whatever, Dominique. You know, maybe you want to turn the video off right now. It's your choice. But I'm telling you what I did for me. See, you listen to somebody who, who struggled with this for over 17 years, maybe closer to 20 some years. You sort of see what I'm saying? That's still over 17 years, but you guys hear my point. So it's, it's not theory. This is experiential knowledge, baby. This, this, is, this is me telling you that I know you can do it. You're worth it. Your family is worth it. Would you like to lose your job because you're so bound by addiction that you can't cut off that computer and stop watching those various videos? Would you want to lose your whole career because now you're known as a guy who stinks and looks at porn and they know it's you because you watch porn so much, you got a virus on your computer. Would you want to be a young lady who wants to get married, wants to be loved, wants to be held at night, and wants to be told, I love you? 
but you've you you've given up so much. You watch porn so much that you got your sex toys in your room with names attached to them. I should say. And now you don't even know how to have a regular, normal relationship with a guy. Porn addiction is rough, man. You know, as a Christian, it has to probably be sex in general is such a powerful, powerful thing, right? With porn addiction, just being probably one of the top. Some therapists don't even look at porn as an addiction, but I, I beg to differ. Anything can be an addiction. Um, Folks, I want you to know that if you just focus on that, it'll get you a long way. I want you guys to do that as an assignment. I want you guys to subscribe to this video. And I want you all to comment below what you think. Yes, this is a long video. This is not five or ten minutes, but I really wanted to go into detail. I wanted to go into depth. And I want you guys to hear a little bit of my story. And I want you guys to hear my heart on this. I want you guys to do this. Write down again. This is your assignment, if you will. A time that you experienced great trauma in your life. And if you gravitated to porn after that, what was it? Some of you guys are nerds. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful manner because I consider myself a bit of a nerd, right? But nerds who, who have black confidence and can't get girls or whatever. So that's your reason for getting into porn. Some of you, 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 you young ladies, you know, maybe don't feel good about yourself. Don't maybe feel good about the way that you look. And so, you know, you see this guy on a porn with like a six pack. You know, that reminds you of the guy on a football team who's the captain of the football team. And you always wanted to be with the captain of the football team. And you know in yourself, you think you can't be with them in real life, but guess what? You're with them now through the porn. That's why you're addicted. So, folks, be honest about your addiction. Don't, don't, don't. Here's the thing. If you, if you lie to God, how can God, how can you be, how can God, you utilize the power of God to help you if you're going to lie to yourself about it. And you're going to lie to other people about it. You have the issue that you have with porn addiction because many of you have not addressed your trauma. That's it. And not only have you not addressed your trauma, you have not gotten rid of Oh, you have not you utilized the proper strategies in order to heal from that trauma or those traumas. Folks, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you in your healing process. I'm here because I understand. I understand the hurt and the pain of rejection. Folks, some of you guys don't believe in Christ, and you should. He died over 2,000 years ago to, to take away those hurts and those pains. Not saying that those things don't exist, because they do. Or not saying that you don't forgive. You're going to forget, because it, it happened. But what I am saying is, you need to forgive. This is for somebody out there. You need to forgive. Your root of porn addiction is rooted in unforgiveness for many of you. So many of you, your root of unforgiveness is, is, is low confidence, low self-esteem, low self-worth, and all those things can be inter intertwined into one another. Mine was rejection. 
Folks, I want you to do me a, uh, do me a, a solid, as we like to say. Do me a solid. Comment below. Subscribe to this video. And, and I want you guys to talk about trauma. Maybe not tell your business. If you feel if you feel comfortable telling your story, then do so. If, if not, by all means, don't do that. Because we don't want to put you in that type of situation. But just comment below how you feel. You know, if this video has helped you. And also share this video because there's a lot of other people that have been out there who have been traumatized or going through this and they don't have an open platform to really talk about it openly and uh, and honestly. I was able to talk about it openly and honestly because I don't have anything to hide, man. I'm free in Christ. My goal is to see you free in Christ. I want to see you be able to get married. I'm married now. I have a wife that loves me, right? I love her and I respect her. But none of this would have happened had I still been addicted to porn. And there's a lot of guys who get porn addicted in marriage for various reasons, but that's a whole other video, right? But what I want you to do is I want you to start there to build your confidence up. And then if you want additional tips and strategies, go to www.pornaddictshelp.com www.pornaddictshelp.com There at my website, I have over six hours. I think it may be closer to seven now. Hours of training just like this, where I talk to you in sort of a more of a homeboy, home girl type way, right? More informal, because I like it that way. I don't want to, I didn't want to just be in a certain shooting suit and tie and like, oh, this is all you do with an addiction. No, oh, man. I want to be relatable to you guys, right? And in those modules, I deal with everything there is to know about porn addiction. I deal with the spiritual ramifications of porn addiction. I deal with the fact that the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but power, principalities, and powers, right? Etc. I deal with how to recognize demonic influence in your life, how to fight demon spirits. I talk about deliverance and the importance of deliverance in your life. I talk about the power of the Rahu Kakadish, the power of the Holy Spirit, and how Jesus himself said that was expedient for him to leave because he was sent the Holy Spirit who will lead you and guide you into all truth. I talk about that and much, much more of those modules, and I give you every single strategy. I pour out as much content that I can and use every single strategy that I can. Well, I show you every single strategy that I can. And, and, I, and, I, and I say as I can because I'm still adding to it daily or I add to it as much as possible in an effort to help you get your freedom, man. And to me, it's worth it. It was worth it for me to be able to get married. It was worth it for me to 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 be in a situation where I could stand before God one day and and know that I'm gonna get into heaven. It was worth it. It was worth it for me not to be depressed because every time that I started looking at those porn videos, guess what I was doing? I was getting more and more depressed. I was going down a more and more of the rabbit hole. And even when I started to have more confidence and, and I finally could talk to girls and do this stuff, I would still revert back to pornography. Why? And there was an influence in my relationships and my behavior within those relationships because I didn't con cut off those connections. I didn't cut off the porn once and for all. And it, it just became, it became like a symbiotic relationship, right? Like a remora on the shark. Like the porn was sucking the life out of me, man. And it was making me weird and act weird and do strange stuff. And I don't want you guys to go through that. But anyway, man, I hope this helped you. I really hope this helped you.
Uh, it was long. It was a lot. I know. Share the video. Like and subscribe below. God bless you.